sitting here with uh, Denise Deschamps for the second time. We first did an interview in Dutch. Mm -hmm. uh, did people react well to, the, to our talk? Yes, very well. I got all kinds of nice messages, uh, people saying they watched the whole interview even twice. Hmm. So that really surprised me. Um, yeah, they really liked it. So. Yeah, I've been listening to it for a couple of times and mm -hmm. I'm, um, yeah, when I see people, I start using those techniques or those suggestions you gave me during our first interview. Mm. Is that a reaction you get a lot from people who, let's say, follow a training by you, that you immediately start using these things? Yeah, it usually is, yeah. Um, in our training, we also... Um, design training in a way that it kind of messes your brain up so you're going to use it you're going to recognize things you're going to think about things um and you well, you did it naturally you just picked it up so yeah we get that a lot hmm. yeah for english uh, viewers who didn't watch the dutch interview um can you tell us in a few sentences what 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 do you teach people what do you tell people yeah um, so I am a psychologist um, originally and I specialize in nonverbal communication and that is the main part I teach people about. So body language for example, but also micro expressions in the face. Um, I do this mainly uh, conducting training and also keynote speeches. So I teach people on one hand to recognize the signs um, on other people so you can see what they're really thinking and feeling so you can connect better with them, but also to see what you do with your body language and how this affects a conversation and a result, for example. Um, because I would love that people are, uh, that they portray um, what they really are from the inside, who they really are, their true character. So that's what I try to do. Hmm. That's what I try to teach them. Yeah, and it's nice that you point out that it's not about, um, let's say, um, uh, recognizing people as liars or uh, uh, dismantling people, or uh, uh, looking for the bad signs. It's mm -hmm. about connection. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's what I like to think. It's very interesting to catch liars, and people uh, um, usually respond to, to that, or ask me, like, can I see if people are lying? Because it, when someone is lying, we're not in a good connection, and usually uh, it benefits the liar and not us. So I can imagine that people want to see it. It's very difficult, though. Um, but I think... Mainly, it's about creating a connection, seeing what you're feeling and thinking, and if you could see it on me as well, then we can have a great connection together. Hmm. First interview uh, we did, I immediately started asking you, uh, what does my body language tell you? And I was sitting like a cowboy <laughs> with my legs open and uh, you call it crouch display. Yes. What does this uh, say? How am I sitting right now? Um, so now you have a little bit a more closed posture, so your one leg uh, crossing the other. If you would put your ankle on your knee, I can't do yeah, it because I'm wearing yeah. a skirt, but um, this is what they call the cowboy cross. So this is more a uh, display of dominance because you're showing your crotch, you're also uh, making a barrier between you and me. When you're holding it like this, um, they say usually it's because you're ready to go. So when we're having a discussion, for example, okay, yeah. people do that very often. So in an interview, that's possible too. You had it a little oh, less, so yes, not yeah. that much display. Okay. So it's a bit dominant, but you're not showing your crutch to me. So you're, um, and your hands are like this, your shoulders are low, so you're mm -hmm. quite relaxed, um, but you're ready to go. That's what it says. Could this also mean insecurity? It could mean insecurity, yes, it could. I usually say body language is like um, a, a quartet. Uh, yeah. Is it a quartet? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you call it that way. So one signal is it doesn't mean anything. Two signals could be a coincidence. Three signals is interesting, and four is a quartet. A match. Yeah. 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 Four. So I need to look for four signals that match, like in a card game, and then I can really. Um, uh, come to a um, conclusion. Yeah, conclusion. Yeah. yeah, what it means. So for insecurity, there could be a little, but it's not the the biggest emotion that you're feeling. Yeah, that's my interpretation of it. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm sitting uh, differently. It, it it makes you very aware of what the signals are you are sending out to uh, to someone. Yeah. And we all know the the 
arms crossed like this. Huh? Maybe mm -hmm. you can demonstrate it for the viewers. If you sit like this, it's a very closed uh, posture. Keep away from me. Mm -hmm. That's what my mother told me. Yeah. She, is she right? Is that is that saying back off, keep away from me? Um, well, partly yes. This is, I think, the most misinterpreted signal there is. Um, because very often people say, well, I do this a lot, but I don't mean back off. I just mean this is comfortable. It's okay. I'm yeah. listening, for example, or being passive. Um, what you're doing, uh, what your brain is thinking is you're protecting your vital organs that are located over here. I'm closing myself off for you with both my arms and they're very firm together. It's not like loosely like this, mm -hmm. it's like this. So to my brain, I'm saying I'm protecting myself and a bit back off. So the emotional part of the brain views this as being insecure, having to protect herself or, uh, or wanting the other person to back off. Mm -hmm. But the rational part of our brain and that's what you're asking doesn't mean like back off people often see it that way but we don't always use it because that's what we mean so we have to look for the four cards in the game again and not just this signal because it could also mean um, um, I'm taking it all in like hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm closing myself off but to think about what you're saying so it's not always negative that's yeah. More important, maybe. Because I can remember an old boss I had, he, when, I would, when I told him something, he would often stand next to me with his arms crossed mm -hmm. and he looked very interested. Yeah, that is possible, yeah. yeah. They're just trying to close themselves off a bit to think about what you're saying, yeah. 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 A popular term in your uh, field of expertise is called micro-expressions. Yeah. Um, we have this popular series on Netflix. Uh, lie to me it's called yeah. that's uh, all based on those micro expressions um, you told us about the series that it, it, it has been simplified very much yeah what, what, what's what's so different about what you do and what they show in the series lie to me um, well part of it is the CIA and the FBI I don't work with them yeah. uh, but also the micro expressions are uh, in real life are very small so they're at the, the, the longest or half a second, for example. But in the series, they are like uh, like this. But in real life, they're like this. Mm. So they're very short. This is even, this is probably too long already. Yeah. Um, what I do, I don't search for lies that much. Uh, we do do assessments. So people um, want to work somewhere, but in job interviews, a lot of people lie. I don't look for the lies, but I look for the qualities and the personality. Um, but then you, you know, you filter the lies out. So it's a different kind of assessment. Uh, but we don't really interview criminals or uh, work with the CIA or, or the mm. FBI. No. Wouldn't that be very interesting for you to? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah to interview like a who is accused of murder, uh, a big murder, and who says I haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. It is. People think it's very easy, you know, you just ask him and then you see if he's lying, but it's it's not that simple. You really have to um, it will ask a lot of questions. Usually you ask something and then you check what is going on and then you ask the question again. We usually do that two to four times to be sure, uh, like the car play again. You make sure you have the right uh, signs, that you don't confuse it with like an itch or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so you do it again, again, and again, but in different ways from different angles, and then you know, okay, I need to go that way, and you do it again four times, at least two, and then you, it's, it's like a maze, you know, you, you're trying to get somewhere, but, but it's not a straight line. Hmm. Yeah. And I just touched my nose. <laughs> you probably... I'm lying, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh... No. People think that touching the nose is lying. Well, it's, it's not... There are not signals that indicate that someone's lying. That's the biggest myth there is, I think. So touching the nose is uh, a very common sign that we see when people lie, but it doesn't necessarily mean that people are lying. And they say it's because when we lie, our brain has stress, and when we're stressed, our um, blood flow changes. Mm -hmm. um, in our nose are a lot of blood vessels, the very small ones, and they get more blood. So when we put a, a infrared camera on someone, you see that the nose gets very red. Not in real life, but because there's so much blood. 
and you can get an itch, you know, when you have a lot of blood in your nose and mm -hmm. maybe the hairs move a little so people touch their nose. That's one of the theories behind it. So I could be a little stressed right now, maybe. Yeah, you could be. Yeah, yeah. because of the Possible. hot weather <laughs> yeah. and, and all the things going on. Um, it's very interesting. Um, what's the main biggest myth about the work you do? What, what do people always ask you when they come up to you? And you say, no, let me tell you, this is how it works. Um, and one of them is the lying, like, oh, and you can see right through me right now. Mm -hmm. Not really. You can see things, but it's not like I can see right through you. An interesting question that I often get is, um, but if you teach this to everyone, it doesn't work anymore. And I think it's exactly the opposite. If we teach this to everyone, and everyone knows we can get a better connection with each other so it's a very interesting question that says a lot about the person asking it because if i know what you really mean i'm more willing to help you or uh, yeah. come forward or yeah there there would be way less lies or um you know sometimes lying could be convenient you know when your girlfriend has a new pair of pants and it doesn't really look that good but she likes them but you don't you don't want to say no it's really i don't like it i really don't so it could be convenient to be um, um to be able to lie but uh, for example i see it when my husband lies or uh, is not completely telling the truth but you learn to filter it you know at the beginning you're not my husband specifically but people around me I saw people lying and I was very upset once I was upset for two weeks, even sad because I saw someone lie right on my face. But then you learn to cope with it because people lie quite a lot or not like it's not a dead on lie, but it's like just telling it a little different. Um, Making things better than they yeah, are. Yeah. yeah, more exciting or not really anything wrong with it, I think. so. Yeah. Even if we all learn to read the body language and micro expressions, I think I think we'll learn to um, take it all with a nuance and not be like you're lying, you're lying. Hmm. But yeah, it'll be okay. It can it can really make me wonder when someone, uh, let's say, I, I went to a job interview mm -hmm. and the boss was. Uh, I don't know if I told you this in the Dutch interview, but the boss was when I told something, he was going like this mm -hmm. with his tongue. And it, it, it seemed like little, uh, how do you, what's a good, good English word, uh, like he was putting me down, like he was thinking, well, don't uh, don't go there, don't start mm -hmm. telling those big stories, I'm the chief, in I'm in charge here. Mm -hmm. Can you do it again? Or yeah, like, mm, like this, or, or uh, really loud coughing through my, uh, or, 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 or no, I can remember one more thing, he, he went like this, he, he pulled up his nose, like, like this all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, what, what's going on here? Yeah. It's, 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 it, it could have a cold, but it could also be a... a and it gave me a, a, a nasty feeling, yeah. all those things I, I, I noticed. Yeah, I think the that thing you did mm -hmm. with that song against the yeah. Um it's usually thinking. Okay. It's a bit of a, they call it a self-soothing gesture. Um, when I, people also do it with their arm, like this. Is, go like, yeah. Yeah, a self-soothing mm -hmm. gesture. We also could do it with the tongue in our mouth. The neck. The neck, yeah, we'll, our hand, or like this. Mm -hmm. And with the tongue the tongue against the inside of your mm -hmm. mouth, it could also be self-soothing. Like, I'm thinking about it, I'm okay. soothing myself a okay. little, so that could be quite neutral. Mm -hmm. um, the, nose, up the nose, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of the micro-expression of disgust, yeah. which is like this, but mm. then smaller. Yeah. It's hard to say when you when you when you tell me like this. So maybe he had a little itch or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or um, maybe it was his sign of disapproving something. Yeah, yeah. That's also possible. The coughing is well, not very nice. <laughs> if it was uh, um, on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's hard to say when you when you tell me. You know, when I see it, I can look for all the signals yeah. together and make an uh, make a conclusion. Okay. And let's say if I meet him again and he does this, exactly the same things, I can really uh, yeah make a story out of it and yeah. think, well, this maybe this is not the right boss for me. Yeah, <laughs> well, this is a very good point you're making because um, I think in body language. And uh, what often goes wrong is that we see one thing and we come to a conclusion or we see like a, the thinking mm -hmm. signal um, 
it could be my insecurity that I think he oh he's not um, uh, immediately agreeing with me yeah. so probably he's disapproving it he doesn't yeah. like me or blah 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 make a whole big story out of it um, it's more my emotion my character that that mixes along in the conclusion I'm gonna um, make make <laughs> um, but when you're you look at it more theoretically you leave your own emotions and character out of it. So you would say, okay, I'm seeing this, I'm also seeing this, this and this, this means this. And you get mm-hmm. like, kind of like an equation, you know, yeah. like a, uh, it's like, um, like mm-hmm. math. Yeah, connecting the, the dots. Yeah. And then you come to a conclusion that is more objective. And uh, I think that usually is more, um, uh, more accurate than when we mix our emotions in it. So that's what I also teach people, to leave your emotions out of it, to first come to a conclusion, theoretically, and then you can put your emotions into it when you think about it, but in the first process, leave them out. Yeah. That helps a lot. So if we would all know this, we could all do that, because mm. we would be a little less emotional. So you're on a mission? Yeah, I'm on a mission, yeah. And where did that mission start and when? Um, Have you been misunderstood a lot in the, in the f- let's mm. say the first 25 years of your life? Good question. Um, I think I sometimes have been misunderstood, but I think the where it started was first when I worked in a prison and my clients were um, the inmates and they were all they were all men and usually a lot older than, older than me. I was um, I think 21, 22, I think, and uh, they came to me like, I'm feeling so depressed, I need medication, but usually when you give the medication, they trade it for drugs or other things, so you have to be very um, alert, yeah, very alert, and then I learned to separate the verbal and the non-verbal, but I didn't have any really scientific information on the non-verbal part, it was just my gut feeling, what, what we all do, and I'm kind of a nerd, so that wasn't enough for me. So I thought, how can I make this more um, accurate? And not just my gut feeling. I can't write in a report, well, I think my gut feeling said mm-hmm. that's that's not enough. You need proof. Yeah, I need a really proof. And also, um, underbowing. Um, yeah. What's that called in English? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you needed to make uh, no assumptions, but yeah. Yeah. A story that it made sense. Yeah. 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 So that sparked my interest, but there wasn't a lot of uh, really good information in Dutch, no real good education in Dutch. Um, so I read uh, English books and uh, tried to look for um, education, but there wasn't a lot, only uh, abroad. And then later on in my career, I got really sick, and that was the moment when I really thought, okay, this is really what I want to do. I was 26 and I got cancer and then the moment was I was laying in bed very often very tired I could talk for five to ten minutes and then it was just done I couldn't talk I couldn't um, follow all these conversations and these words and how they fit into sentences I was just too tired so I just paid attention to the Mm nonverbal and I could still make out everything that was happening you know how everybody was feeling and what was going on um, and then when I was, um, well, when not really, I wasn't really healed, but when I was recovering, mm-hmm. I thought, this is really, really interesting. I really need, want to do and need to do more with this because I could understand all these people without the verbal part and they understood me through my non-verbal communication. Mm-hmm. And I had some really good connections with some nurses and some doctors. Others I didn't because I looked at the non-verbal communication and we just weren't a match. And um, then I thought I'm gonna quit my job while recovering from cancer, and I'm gonna um, well do training in this, get certificates, and uh, start my own company and try to help other people with this. So that for me was the moment where I really thought, okay, this is it. I'm mm. gonna do this. Yeah. So it's now five years ago, on and about. Yeah. Ever regret? making that decision no 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 like five years ago was when i was sick i had um operations and stuff for about a year and i think three and a half years ago i started my company okay but n- no regrets no no 
And is there like a Bible on uh, on the theory of nonverbal communication that everyone should read? When <laughs> um, well, you actually have books that are called the Bible, the oh, nonverbal Bible, yeah. body language Bible. But um, I think the um, the most known and most reliable name is Paul Ekman. He's one of the pioneers that did really interesting research. His books are quite dry to read. It's really mm -hmm. scientific, but it's really, really good. So um, there are some books that are easier to read, but they're also less reliable. Mm -hmm. So that's, for example, uh, the definitive book of body language from Barbara and Alan Pease. It's also very interesting, but a little less reliable than Paul Ekman is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And should everyone read those books or should you all only read those books if you are interested in this subject? Um, yeah, I think it's up to the people themselves if they want to read it. I think everybody could gain from it. You, you, you really learn to see more and um, to, to get you s to know yourself better. Even though, you know, reading a, it's like riding a bike. You don't learn how to ride a bike by no, reading a book no. about it. No. But um, you can still learn from it. So I think if you want to, you could, and I think everybody could gain from it, yeah. Yeah, uh, I can watch you and, and interpret what your expressions are, but I can't watch myself. Mm -hmm. Or is that also a good practice that I put myself in front of a mirror? But yeah, maybe then it's a little static or something. But mm -hmm. Do you often watch yourself when you, let's say this interview, mm -hmm. are you gonna watch it back and pause it and sit and look at yourself and think, hmm, there I touched my nose, there I cleaned my lips, there I touched my hair. <laughs> oh. I used to do that a lot, yeah. yeah. I usually recommend people not to stand in front of the mirror because uh, you know, you're know you talking and moving, you're seeing yourself, you're thinking about what you're seeing, you're judging what you're seeing, you're uh, adjusting, so it's mm -hmm. too much for your brain. So I usually recommend to record yourself in a conversation and just watch it, so you, watch it so you can see what you do and what your trademark uh, signals are that you do yeah. very often. Um, I used to do that a lot, yeah. I, uh, I tape myself uh, giving presentations, also uh, with coaching clients one-on-one -on -one because I think I can teach people but I also have to keep improving myself and give a good example. So I'm not perfect and I'm not training anybody to be perfect. Um, but I think my nonverbal matches my personality quite well, so that's the goal. Yeah, because it has to be natural, I guess, the yeah. way you express yourself. Yeah. I talk a lot with my hands and someone once told me, well, I got so tired of watching you well with those hands and I think, oh, okay, you get tired, but that's who I am. Yeah. Should I then think about, oh no, I don't have to use my hands that much? Yeah, I think there's, there's two parts to that question. So. Um, if you want to connect with someone that is, for example, more an introvert or has less energy, then maybe you can adjust yourself to make a better connection. But I don't think you should, I don't think there are do's or don'ts in body language. So we all should talk with our hands or not talk with our hands. It depends on your character. And I think um, in, an, in a perfect world, our body language should match who we are inside. So if if in your case that's uh, quite energetic, then your hands should move because mm -hmm. this is less energetic than when I move my hands. So I think that's and that's how I see it. Again, it matches your personality. You are a very yeah. energetic woman. I'm a very energetic guy. So that's my way of expressing. Exactly. You yeah. shouldn't uh, cancel that, I no. guess. No, definitely not. I think that's what often goes wrong in body language that we think we have to do things and stop doing things but there is if that was true we could just write one book and you should do this and you mm. shouldn't do this and that's it but that's not the case it's like words you know it's the same as words you use different words than i do that match your personality or emotions um, it's the same with body language you don't all have to use the same words but you can adjust a bit uh, if you're talking with someone and you know okay they don't like cuss words or they like to um, be uh, um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's what's it called? In yeah, in English it's the same. You and, and yeah, exactly. And you. Yeah. When well, they want to be called ma'am or yeah, something, ma'am yeah. instead yeah. of you or yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. yeah. So let's say this was a date, mm -hmm. and I, I'm 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 wondering if you are interested in me or not. What signs should a man mm -hmm. or 
or a woman look for in the in the partner they are dating, mm -hmm. which could mean that they are interested in him or her. Good question. Um, well, for men and women, it's slightly different because men do different things than women do. Um, so women generally have more what we call signals of um, um, uh, more submissive signals, mm -hmm. and men have more signs of dominance. Mm -hmm. So when a woman is flirting, you know, we when I picture me as a woman, we go like this, and when I'm flirting, I'm more like, oh really? Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah, no, I do come here often. Yeah, you smile so a lot. Yeah, that, I move true. my head. Yeah. Uh, so when I tilt my head, I am um, showing my neck to you, very vulnerable part of my body. I'm also when I'm doing this, for example, tucking my chin in, I'm making my eyes bigger um, towards to the rest of my head. Mm -hmm. So we um, associate that with younger children, you know, in, in cartoons you also see this, when the eyes are bigger it's supposed to be cute, so mm. women also do this like oh, that, yeah. like Marilyn Monroe. Innocent. Um, yeah, innocent. My eyebrows go up, they pull up the mm. eyelids. Um, and men don't do this. When a guy does like, oh really, that's really nice. <laughs> we think they like men. Yeah, they're gay. Yeah, yeah they're gay. Um, and for a woman it's the same. Um, so picture me as a guy. If we're having a date mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm just being a guy like this, but then when I'm flirty, flirty I'm like, oh really? Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, you, you go here more often or, yeah, yeah. I can't do it that much right now, but they usually yeah, yeah. show their crotch more yeah. and they get more dominance. Yeah. But when I'm a woman and I go like that, they think I'm kind oh, of a, a lesbian, a lesbian <laughs> yeah. or I'm a bitch or, yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. So it's different for men and women. And what I see in training, the signal that men interpret uh, wrong very often is when women strike their neck like this. They think it's flirting, but actually it means that I'm uncomfortable. I, this is self-soothing and the neck is a very vulnerable part again. So I'm um, touching myself on my neck to calm myself down. So it's not flirting when I do this. It is flirting when it could be flirting when people do this or but not the neck touching, that's not, usually not flirting. And is it the myth that someone likes you when they talk a lot? I would say, yeah. 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 It's not, yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, just checking. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't recall any scientific evidence for that. So. No. Yeah. And um, what kind of people do you train? Do you do, you do a dating training or is it more for the professional world people, uh, uh, CEOs who have to give a speech? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more the last example. So mm -hmm. more the commercial world and managers, directors, um, but also doctors, for example, how to communicate with your patients or psychologists, how to communicate with your clients, um, people that are in sales, for example. Uh, also, we do media training, so people have to stand in front of the camera. How do you do that? What, what do you tell with your body language? How can it be authentic and still really you? So, very broad. Yeah, very yeah. broad. Yeah, I think that's a nice thing about my profession that it applies to everyone, and that keeps it very. Um, there's a lot of variety for me in it. So a lot of different clients, a lot of different training. Uh, for me, that's really nice. Yeah. We talked about it in our Dutch interview, um, poker face, that's something that uh, is a, a common uh, expression. Mm -hmm. uh, we say that about someone we can't read what he's thinking or doing. Yeah. Yeah, the poker face. So let's say I say, hey, your car is on fire mm. and you still look like this. That's your poker face. People use it playing poker. Um, <laughs> any tips or tricks for people playing poker who uh, could... Um, uh, use this looking yeah. at their opponents yeah looking at their opponents so in poker you often see that people wear sunglasses yeah because people say your eyes are the way to the soul or something mm -hmm. I don't know the English expression exactly um, your eyes the eyes don't tell that much because they can't do very much your pupils can get bigger and smaller but it's really hard to see yeah. it is more so the muscles around the eyes so the glasses have to be really big for your opponent not to see <laughs> what's happening yeah. you could do that but um me i read more from the mouth and the eyes so you should i don't know yeah. <laughs> bite something in front of it to your yeah. workout for yeah. example yeah and so the glasses maybe it makes you feel secure but it doesn't really cover a lot um 
what you should pay attention for or micro expressions you need some training but what what i often see is when people have good cards they lean forward a little bit and when they have uh, bad cards they lean backward a little bit so it's very small it is a a very um, primitive reaction like if i don't like something i want to go back from Mm -hmm. it if i like it i want to go towards Mm -hmm. it and it's if we don't know it it's hard to to stop it but you can train yourself in this the micro expressions you can't train yourself to not have them they're always going to be there but you really need training to spot them so if you are good at reading the face Mm -hmm. then the fear micro expression could come in handy so that's when the muscle right here pulls back like this disgust now this is fear fear Fear. disgust is like this oh yeah yeah um but it's very small like Mm. that we do it usually one time you know i see my cards and i'm like yeah i go like that that's oh shit yeah. <laughs> these, yeah these cards i don't want them um happiness is a very small smile so both corners of the mouth go up like mm-hmm. we like we know it but then very briefly yeah. like that so i'm happy with my cards um you could also see disgust and that's the nose that pulls mm-hmm. up and the uh, inner corner of the mouth like that and what about joy you, you know when, when i tell you good news your eyes start to sparkle or you uh, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. a funny expression because people always say that your eyes sparkle well, mm-hmm. what is your eyes sparkle what do your eyes do yeah they glance or they have uh, uh, it's like like stars in their eyes uh, and you know what it is it's yeah. the muscles around the eyes that okay. do that it's they, they it's not the eye itself it's not the eye itself uh-huh. it could be when you get a little teary but Usually it's like, yeah, like that. They just you you squint a bit. Yeah. that's what it is. But we say the eyes are uh, glaring or sparkling. Yeah, it's very yeah. funny. The joy is also the mouth usually, so the eyes is is less. When we have general uh, happiness or joy, genuine, we squint the eyes, the whole muscle like this. But in poker you usually don't see mm. it. That will be a lot. Like <laughs> it's too much. Then you're done. <laughs> you're out of the game. But can you use it to mislead other people? Yeah, you, you get can. bad cards and you go like, ah. Or yeah, you can. For the opponents, it would be good to see how long the expression takes. So it should be very, very brief. So mm. half a second. Then it's real, is it longer? It could be fake. Yeah. Also, the timing is important. Most of the time when we fake emotions on our face, it is too late. So I'm seeing my cards. I already saw them. I was turning and I saw them. And then one second later, I'm like, hmm. But usually when you see them, it moves immediately yeah i'm thinking about people who use botox a lot mm-hmm. yeah, it, we always see them on tv and it sometimes looks when when they smile that there's something very wrong with them mm-hmm. um, do you ever train people who, who got botox to still use, smile yeah, to still <laughs> give a genuine smile or because it no. often looks very very fake yeah yeah well the hard part is that you you numb some muscles so you can't use them and i can't train them to use them because they're really yeah, just they're numb off yeah they're yeah. off like yeah so no not really no. no i do train people that don't have botox that don't use certain muscles to use them yeah to use them more because sometimes people just don't use their forehead at all so it's only here nothing yeah. here but it helps if the eyebrows also do something and the eyes sometimes so i do train people in that or smiling more or yeah a little more um, difficult is people who let's say had had an accident and mm-hmm. their face got burned yeah it, 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 yeah when you see them you it immediately gives a boundary between you and them because you can't really read their face because their face is Mm-hmm. Yeah, not messed up, but it, they. It looks they, different. Yeah. Yeah. Ever trained people who had a burn accident or? No, no, I no. didn't. No. Or could they be trained? Uh, yeah, I think they could. I think the um, the the things we look at in the face are different. For example, uh, old people when we don't have eyebrows, so some women shave their eyebrows mm-hmm. off. It's more difficult to see certain things because we have this as points that we focus on you know and yeah. if it's gone also with people that are very blonde and have like this mm-hmm. color eyebrows it's more difficult to see um, so we like to have these these focus points on the face so yeah. that makes it harder um, I can imagine for someone who's a burn victim that it could be useful to use the muscles more to still 
have expression and create a connection with someone else. Yeah. yeah. There was an episode of The Good Doctor, it's a series I love to watch, mm -hmm. where a girl couldn't smile. Mm. She had an, an, an illness and she, uh, the, the whole episode was about this, I could maybe send you the link, because it, they were discussing about should we operate this girl or not? Yeah, we have to give her back her smile. Mm -hmm. Is it more important than we think, the, this, this, this face we use? Is it, is it maybe the most important tool we have to communicate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, I think so, yeah. I think the not only for uh, towards others, but, but also towards ourselves. So towards others, I express my emotions through my face mainly. So my arms can be like uh, creating a barrier, but it's not a specific emotion. So the emotion is through my face. Yeah. Um, so I think it's very important, but also to ourselves, because we influence our brain with the muscles we use in our face. Uh, there has been a study done, I think several studies, uh, on people that use Botox uh, around the eyes and also uh, the mouth, what happens to their brain when they do that? And they discovered that they generate less... Um, um, uh, endorphins. Yeah, yeah, endorphins, yeah, the, the, the hormones that make you feel yeah. happy. I don't know if they're called happy hormones, but mm -hmm. uh, endorphins, yeah, and serotonin and stuff. Um, so you literally feel less happy when you numb those muscles. So I think in wow. this case, I would say, yeah, let's give her a smile back so she can feel more happiness. Yeah. Hmm. So, and, and how does that work? Then, when you start smiling, I m immediately start smiling too. Mm -hmm. how, how come we react so much on each other? Um, well, smiling, for example, is, they say, a sign of, um, um, so yeah, a bit submissiveness. So I'm saying to you, I'm not trying to dominate you, it's okay. I'm trying to make a connection, friendliness, and you smile back to me as a signal like, okay, I'm being your friend, it's okay, so we can calm down. Hmm. Um, so that's what we do. And that is the same reason that we um, get uncomfortable when someone has a poker face, naturally. When someone looks at us like hmm. this, we get uncomfortable because we don't know what the person is feeling or thinking. We get insecure because not rationally, but our brain is like, you know, I need to know what you're thinking. I need yeah. to know if we are friends, if you like me, yes or if no. you're my enemy or my friend. Yeah, yeah. for my, you know, to, to survive, eventually. Yeah. yeah. So it's all things from, let's say, three to four thousand years ago, when we still had to uh, hunt uh, and, and meet other people from tribes from far away. Yeah. And, and to know if we're safe. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. And what about the animal world? What, what can we learn from, let's say, for example, a dog? You, mm -hmm. you, you told in a Dutch interview that part of showing your neck, mm -hmm. dog also, dogs also do that? Yeah. When two dogs meet each other, the um, less dominant dog will show their neck, but turn the head away all the way, so no eye contact, just showing the neck, to say, I'm showing you, you this vulnerable part of my body, I'm not being a threat, see? It's okay. So the other dog can be the leader. And we people also do this, but then less. So we do this, for example, just a little tilt mm. to show our neck. We do this when we meet each other. For example, when I introduce myself, people often go like, hi, I'm Denise or something. Um, we show our neck to say, it's okay, I'm your friend. I'm not trying to dominate you. Mm. Could be useful, could also work against you um, because you're showing a bit of... Um, Vulnerability. Yeah, and, and it is also friendly and open, and but maybe you don't always want to be friendly and open. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just want to be assertive or strong or powerful. So then this is uh, uh, less. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's not so good to to do it. Yeah, we don't have a tail. Dogs have a tail. You mm -hmm. can immediately say if the, if the tail is between the legs, the dog is scared and. When he starts wagging his tail, mm -hmm. what, what what kind of body parts do we have? Well, I can imagine one, but we're not <laughs> going to touch on that. But what kind of body parts do we have that can also, or, or do we do also use to show our show ourselves, to show our friendliness? Mm -hmm. I think we show we do a lot with our face and mm -hmm. also our hands. Our hands are very important in our communication. So when we want to show uh, like openness, we show the palm of our hands and also our wrists. 
because palm of the hands, this is saying, I'm not hiding anything, I don't have any weapons concealed, okay. I'm being open to you. Yeah. And this is again a vulnerable part of her body, the wrist, so I'm, I'm again showing you, it's okay, I'm not being a threat or I'm not trying to dominate you. So that's openness. And um, when we are being more aggressive, more dominant, we often point. Oh, yeah. And pointing is, the brain registers the fist. And this is just a pointy thing so you know who this is about mm. or what this is about. But yeah. it's very aggressive, dominant when yeah. I talk to you like this. Like, what a good idea, we're gonna yeah. do that. That's that's a lot. So this is also possible. What a great idea, we're, we're gonna do that. Yeah. And you don't have to be like that. You can learn that. Yeah, you can learn that, yeah. yeah. I usually say you, because people ask me a lot, um, won't it be um, inauthentic or uh, uncomfortable when I'm going to do things differently? Yes, it is, if you're going to do it like at once in mm -hmm. an appointment, for example. So I usually tell them, you train it in training, not during the game. So the game is, is kind of a sports reference, like Messi doesn't train his penalties in the game, mm -hmm. he does it in the training. And the same applies to this. So you train it at home or in training with us or with your partner, with your colleagues. And then when you're with a client, you already have this in your nonverbal vocabulary, we yeah. call it. So yeah. it's, it's just normal. So that's important. And what about gestures? We all know the gesture is someone pats you on the mm -hmm. back, eh? Mm -hmm. you, you did well. You have a certain kind of people who uh, come to you and like my old aunt, she, uh, mm -hmm. how do you call it? Pinched my, my cheek. Yeah. You also have bosses who see you and they pat you in the face like... I don't like that No, one. no, I don't like that one either. <laughs> it's very... It's de de degrading. Yeah. But yeah, it's like putting you down. Yeah. This is also saying I, I'm standing above you, you're standing... Yeah. But it is a compliment in a way, you did well. But if I can tell you you did well, I am probably above you, standing above you. So it's also a bit dominant, but mm -hmm. this is... That's really dominant. That yeah. It's not nice. No. No. And when you entered um, my house, mm -hmm. or the place where we do this interview, um, you gave me three kisses. That, that's the Dutch way of greeting each other uh, between a man and a woman. You mm -hmm. don't often see men giving each other mm -hmm. three kisses in the Dutch culture, yeah. in, in the Moroccan culture or wherever countries they do it. And you, you gave me a little, I can remember a little squeeze in the, I did. In the shoulder. What? Oh, I said nice to see you. Yeah, what's something. that about? Should I worry? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Let me think. So I gave you three kisses and then and a I... A little, little squeeze in the, here, in the show. I think I do that to... Um, to re give me a relax? Uh, um, to really... Uh, how do I say this? To have us be in that moment. Like, I'm, I'm really glad to see you. Okay. Like, I'm keeping you here. Okay. I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Because people often go like, oh, are you good? Very good. Yes, me too. And then, but it's not really mm. a greeting. So yeah. I think, I think I'm making a connection. That's what I'm okay. doing. Yeah, great. Um, let's, let's say if we have an, a, a more of those. And maybe if, if, is there one that stands out for you? Like kicking someone in the butt. Okay, of course, that's a way of saying, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm just thinking. Handshake. Mm -hmm. I can remember an old boss of mine. When he gave me a hand, it was really like this very soft mm -hmm. hand. And I thought, man, don't give a hand like that. And I don't know if you told me this in our Dutch interview or someone else told me, he said, he has a weak personality. People who give you a, a, mm -hmm. a loose hand like that, mm -hmm. don't trust them. They won't do what they say. They're weak. Well, I definitely did not say that <laughs> okay. because I would never no? say it like that. No, but they do say that... Um, uh, a stronger handshake is associated with a stronger personality, a weaker handshake or a looser handshake mm -hmm. is associated with a weaker personality. So that is true, but it doesn't necessarily mean like this is a weak yeah. personality, you shouldn't trust that person, that is way too far. Not yeah. one on one. No. no. No, absolute truth. No. No. And what about this hand when someone puts his hand above you, above the other hand? Yeah, so two hands. Yeah, confirmation. Uh, one. Yeah, they call it the hand hug. Mm. You're actually hugging the hand from both sides. Um, it's a bit of dominance because you're more in control. You have two hands on one. It also has something soothing, like um, you can do this with your grandma. You know, like hi grandma. You could 
you could mm-hmm. put your second hand on there or when someone died like I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss so it's kind of soothing yeah um, so when uh, politicians do this and their opponents it's it's re- it's really weird like yeah. usually they have training in it and that's why they do it but I don't think it's fit for the situation because they're trying to be more dominant you know if I can soothe you I am a little bit above you um, and I have more control because I have two hands on your one hand. If you don't put the fourth hand on it, that would be really weird. Um, but it's not really fit for that kind of situation. So I don't think that's really authentic when they do that. Yeah. Yeah. We're now in Holland. Mm-hmm. There will be people in England watching this, people in America, maybe Russia. There's a lot of difference between cultures. Yeah. Yeah. And so a part of the body language is always the same, such as micro expressions are the same everywhere, but also. Like what I said about protecting your vital organs is the same in every country, every Mm -hmm. continent. But um, some do it bigger, some do it smaller. So we usually say Americans, uh, everything is a bit bigger. Like, hello, it's so nice to see you. And in Holland, it's like, oh, I'm so so nice to see you. And in the more Asian cultures, it is even smaller. So there's a difference what is... um, um, what is okay in the culture to do? How much mm-hmm. emotion can you show? That that is a difference. Yeah. In Japan, people bow to each other. Yeah, they, they don't even touch hands. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we touched upon it uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago. There are no absolute truths, if I uh, yeah, understand you correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't um, that difficult for you then? Well, if you're looking for an absolute truth or or a definite conclusion, it is difficult. But I think. People are very complex, so maybe we don't need a very concrete conclusion. Mm. And it's nice that we're all different than a bit of puzzles. So um, if you're looking for the right thing, then I think it's not difficult. At the beginning, I remember a period in my life where I found it difficult because we're, um, I think we're programmed to want to know everything because it's good for our survival. Mm-hmm. So it would be handy if I could just say, okay, it's this, it's this, it's this, but it, it doesn't work that way. No. Yeah. Well, maybe it's good that it doesn't work that way because, yeah. uh, let's say, uh, you could get punished for it. If, if you bring out a book which says if people look like this and do that, mm-hmm. they're lying. And then some uh, police officer <laughs> gets his, his hands on this book. Yeah. It could uh, bring me in a nasty situation. Yeah. So, because I'm not always aware of how I approach you or... Yeah, and I think there's a difference between between thinking or feeling something and um, wanting something. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's say, I think everybody's a killer, for example. We're all killers if you push the right buttons. Mm-hmm. So let's say you pu- push, you almost push the right button for me to become a killer. I could think in my mind about strangling you, for example, and a police officer could be like, she's having strangling thoughts. But mm-hmm. if I don't do it, I'm still not conducting Guilty. a crime. Yeah. yeah. And it was just because you pushed that one little tiny button. Um, and not because I'm generally daily uh, um, a killer on the streets, you know. Yeah. So I think that's the, the, the part that is um, a risk in body language. And that we have to be very careful, careful for. To not interpret one thing wrong. Hmm. and make a whole story about it. Yeah. Is there a book people can read uh, which is written by you or isn't that available yet? Uh, not yet. I would love to write a book. It will be uh, um, more like a workbook because it's like riding a bike. I wouldn't write uh, like only theoretical, so mm-hmm. also with exercises. It's not there yet, uh, but I would love to write a book. So. Oh. If someone sees this and it's like, oh, well, we're a Polish agency, mm-hmm. then... They can contact you. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. what's the uh, uh, fastest way of getting in touch with you? Um, I think through our website, because there are the, co- the contact uh, inform- there is the contact information. Um, what's it called? Uh, bodylanguageacademy.nl Yeah. Yeah. We still have uh, about 10 minutes, so, but I just asked you for people who are interested. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's so many things I can ask uh, you about this. Um, I don't want to repeat too much, which we already discussed in our uh, Dutch interview for people who uh, watch also this interview and the other one. Um, do you train actors? Because I can imagine that an actor has to be very aware of what he's bringing out of his system on the screen. Mm-hmm. 
I don't train actors, I do work with them and I'm always surprised uh, how well they already do this. Um, you, you see differences in actors and usually I uh, in my mind goes, oh, if you only did this, it would be so much better. Mm -hmm. um, but they do it from, uh, I think, um, unconscious level. And they just crawl into the skin of the character and feel the emotions. And that's when it's really uh, looking really real, really authentic, because they are feeling it. So that I think that would be my biggest tip for actors. Um, don't think about how would it look, but try to feel it and then... Um, the look come automatically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And is, is that why it's so difficult to fake? Let's say, f let's say I, I'm in a relationship with you and I have to fake that I like you. That's a big, uh, yeah, a big thing. Yeah, that's not the right relationship. No, okay. But it's almost <laughs> but, yeah. impossible. Yeah, it's very hard. I think it, it would cost you a lot of energy if you have to do that constantly. Yeah, yeah, that's very hard. I think you could fool quite some people, but on the long term. Especially when we get tired, it gets more difficult. Yeah, we can't put up the face, we call it. Yeah. I think we, we all uh, do it during the day. Yeah. Um, recently someone asked me, like, can you manipulate people with this? It's a good question. I think um, probably yes, but we already manipulate people with this all day long. Because um, I had a client today, it was very hot, and also in the training um, oh, yeah. setting where we were, area where we were, and I was just, the last hour was just, oh, I, I, my brain said, I can't do this anymore, but I can't show her that. I can't be like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I have to still put up a good face and, and continue the training because she yeah. paid for it. So professional, professional. Yeah. So I am manipulating her. I'm not being authentic in a way. I'm not showing her my true feelings, mm -hmm. but it's professional. Also, when a lot of people say my mother-in-law, I don't like, I like my mother-in-law, but a lot of people are always yeah. talking about that. Um, you can't go there and be like, oh, this bitch again. You know, you have to put up a face and, and uh, sort of an appearance to uh, um, act with your, with your uh, fam with that family. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of the voice. Uh, I come from the radio uh, business and I always was very careful which voice I put on the air. So let's say mm -hmm. 10 people call for uh, a quiz or something. I always looked for the right uh, voice. We, when we call a call center, immediately our voice almost gets higher. Huh? To, when we to, call a call center? Yeah, we, we, let's say you have to get something done. Mm -hmm. I, I need a plumber. Ah. Uh, my girlfriend needed a plumber and I, I sat there when, when she was calling a plumber and her voice literally went from huh to huh, like almost. Yeah. Hi, this is yeah, yeah, I yeah, need yeah. a plumber. Yeah. How come, what, what, what's, that, what's that about, raising um, our voice higher and lower? Yeah, so higher is associated with more submissiveness and the lower is more dominant. Mm. So, for example, if you were trying to leave, but I want you to stay and I go like, uh, no, please wait a second. That's like a question. Oh, but if I, yeah. yeah, you're like, uh, maybe I'll just go. But if I use the lower voice, like, no, please just wait a second. Mm. Then yeah. you're like, okay. I feel, I feel <laughs> the stay. difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, so that's and when we use the higher voice, it is usually also just like the neck saying, "I'm not a threat. I, you know, I want something from you, but I'm being nice." That's what we're doing. Like, could I please have a glass of water instead of "Could I please have a glass of water now?" Yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, but the higher voice is more uh, friendly, also. Of course. Yeah. So there, not only the voice is communicating, our body is communicating. The yeah. voice. The, the way face. the face, what, what more? Our breathing, for breathing? example. Yeah. yeah, breathing. Also, uh, the color in our face, for mm -hmm. example. Tell something. Uh, yeah, and uh, what else? <laughs> Things that you also have, uh, like proxemics. It's, it's um, a word we use for everything that has to do with uh, the use of space. So um, if you were to invite me in your living room, where do I sit? On the couch, on the chair, in the corner, in the middle? And how much space do I take? Do I go like this? Mm -hmm. or do I Put the like feet on this? the table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, how much do I um, make a uh, territory? Mm -hmm. So what you see people do is they put their stuff everywhere. So like a pen and a glass and a book and another book. Mm -hmm. and what does that say? It says, this is my territory. 
Stay, it's my space. Yeah, it's my personal space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have this uh, famous video of Donald Trump, which is really nice. He comes in uh, with the big table and he pushes the stuff from other people <laughs> away to say the same thing. This is my territory. Yeah. I am expanding my territory or in my space. I need this much space. The um, dog. It's like the dog peeing. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like the dog peeing. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah, and um, it's also when you're talking to someone and the person um, is coming too close to you. You know, you, you take mm -hmm. a step back, but they follow you. And you're like, so you take another step back, mm -hmm. but they keep on coming. It becomes some sort of a dance. Yeah. Um, they have a different feeling for proxemics. They just naturally want to stand closer to you or too far away. That's also possible. Or in your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go away. Yeah. Also, smell is not verbal. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Someone will put some old spice, that terrible aftershave. And way too much. What yeah. does what does what does he or she communicate? <laughs> yeah, that's a more difficult one because body language is subconscious. So we we the biggest part of it. So we don't know that we're doing it. But with the old spice, we know mm. we're doing it several yeah, times. Way so too much. it says usually says more about the personality or what the person associates this old spice scent with. So if it's uh, his father used to wear it and he thought his father was very powerful and maybe uh, he's like oh i want to be powerful too yeah. you know we associate scent very well with things but on the subconscious level very often so there was a research done about perfume and men liking women and they discovered that if a girl wore the perfume that his mother used to wear that they were uh, attracted more or quicker to the uh. woman so scent is uh, also nonverbal and also works on a primitive level. Yeah. yeah, then maybe we have two more things we can touch on uh, about makeup. Makeup, yeah, yeah. So um, makeup is is um, it's kind of like the like the uh, perfume actually. You're we're trying to make ourselves look better to be a better partner to to. Uh, guarantee our survival and yeah. um, and, and uh, procreation. Yes, exactly. Red lips means you are uh, fertile. Fertile, yeah. Fertile, yeah. Fertile, fertile. Yeah, fertile. Yeah, fertile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And also now you have all these girls getting lip fillers, for example. The bigger the lips, you know, it's yeah. the same thing with boobs and hips and yeah. butt. The bigger it is, the more fertile you look. Fertile, okay. Fertile. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. And makeup is you're trying to enhance features like women wear mascara because your eyes look bigger. It makes us think of when we're younger, when you are more fertile. Yeah. But also like a, a flat tummy. A lot of men like a flat tummy because it reminds you of a woman that doesn't um, has had a child yet. Oh. And when it's bigger, it reminds yeah. of reminds us of she did have a child. So oh. it's all very biological and primitive. Wow. Yeah. And on the whole clothing industry is, is based on that, accenting the right things. Yeah. The barbers, the hair. Do you yeah. always wear your hair loose or do you often mm -hmm. put it? And in what kind of occasion do you put it like with a clipper or how you call it? In Me a, personally? Yeah, ponytail or... Um, I almost always wear it loose and mm -hmm. when I work out I put in a ponytail. Um, with curly hair, it's a bit more difficult to put it in a ponytail because it goes like mm -hmm. this and I have very short hair here that doesn't make it through the end. So I'm kind of like a lion with all kinds of hair yeah. around my face when I do it. Um, so I usually wear it like this. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that gray hair uh, looks uh, not only old, but also not fertile, mm -hmm. if that is the right word. But uh, what about coloring your hair? Someone, you meet someone who has red hair what do you tell mm -hmm. and, and not red hair natural but dyed it dyed, yeah what does it say to you um i i think it's not a one-on-one -on -one situation you can say it means this but i think it could mean that the person is okay with uh, standing out because dyeing your hair red is it's you know red hair is i think the the least um yeah. How do you say it? It, 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 it doesn't, uh, you don't see that that much. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's more bold, I yeah. think. So I think it's usually a person that, that is okay with standing out. But it's not like if you have red hair, you're okay with standing out. Hmm. Couldn't say that. Not one on one. No. And they also say with um, wearing your hair loose or in a ponytail, that loose is more... It's also the same with the nails and the hair, you know, the, the stronger the hair is, the stronger the nails are, the longer they are, the shinier it all is. 
uh, the better I am uh, in terms of my DNA to have a child with someone to well yeah the same thing again and what about tattoos tattoos yeah you don't have any tattoos which no I no, can imagine I um, why do people what, what do what, what do people want to express with a tattoo a, a part of the a, I know there's a very much meaning into a tattoo they take it for a special occasion or a special happening but often people with tattoos have a quite a yeah typical personality not everyone takes tattoos mm -hmm. yeah um well I'm, I'm, it's not one of my specialties but i'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about it um when we go back in time you used to have uh, tribes and you, you had sort of tattoos to see which tribe you belong to yeah. and i can imagine it has something to do with that i think part of it is um something's really important to me and i want to put it on my body mm -hmm. to make it uh um, to make it last forever mm -hmm. but also you belong to a certain group when you when you uh, get yeah. a tattoo you know i belong to the group with the people with tattoos yeah, yeah. and i belong to the group of people with no tattoos yeah. so, so it's a lifestyle yeah, yeah yeah it's the same with clothes you know if you wear this or like a ripped up jeans it's a different subculture that you belong to so i can't imagine that being a part of it and i think also in tattoos you have subcultures yeah. you know you, you have like um quotes or uh, very big sleeves or uh, what they used to call tramp stamps yeah. or uh, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing so yeah. I think there's also subcultures within the culture. But isn't it typical that almost every man who stands at a door at a discotheque or a club, those big fancy men, they all have their whole arms. Mm -hmm. Isn't it just a display of, of power and, 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 and could be. macho yeah. meaning? Yeah, it could be. I think a lot of people uh, find tattoos to look tough. Hmm. So I, I can't imagine that that's a part of it yeah uh, I, I also i always try to look for um other things so uh, check out the clothes check out the hair check out the accessories are very important so mm -hmm. are they wearing rings a watch uh, a necklace for example and if they're wearing a really big fake rolex, rolex for yeah. example yeah, yeah. Have a really big uh, yeah. a necklace with i don't know uh, something on it um they're trying to stand out and maybe be tough or something like that and when it's someone in a suit for example and everything is very slick and they have it it'll probably be a different tattoo yeah. but it's a different maybe it's um his mother's name that died or something you know yeah. it's probably something else so i try to look for more cars in the game to come to the conclusion yeah of course how come you don't wear any um, accessories? No rings? No earrings? If I, if I, I no, I don't have earrings. No, I, I always wear my engagement ring, mm -hmm. but it's being fixed because it was a little loose. Okay. Um, so I'm not wearing it right now. But not I a watch? It. Is that because you no. don't want to come on time? or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a Fitbit watch and I have a like a rosé gold watch, but when it's really warm, they irritate oh, yeah. me, so I don't wear them. But I don't wear a lot of jewelry. No. Hmm. What does that say? I used to though. I used to wear the the statement necklaces, yeah. you know, the very big ones. Yeah. Um, I think it's a part of fashion now. It's not very fashionable anymore. The smaller necklaces are very in now. It doesn't match with the dress that I'm wearing. Um, and I think I pay less attention to my appearance than I used to well different different attention I think I used to wear earrings or a necklace or a bracelet I used to but I don't anymore no okay I put on a good dress good heels and or a pants or a suit or whatever but I'm not really jewelry anymore no. I just put my hand on my forehead that I imagine, I, I'm just saying, it's, it's getting hot in here, we have to open up the door. Mm -hmm. Or does it make you insecure and that I don't, I'm not interested anymore? Do you look for those signs? I do look for those signs, yeah. yeah. But in this case, you were, you were touching your forehead, you were looking at the outside, you yeah. look there longer than you look there, yeah. there's a bigger door and bigger windows. Yeah. And I didn't see any signals of um, being really bored. So for me, there weren't enough cards in the game yeah. to say you're bored, but... If I, I start yawning, then maybe... Maybe, yeah. yeah. But it could also be the heat still. Yeah. Yeah. And looking away? Yeah, now you looked 
really at the window. Yeah, so I yeah. thought, okay, you're getting I'm looking hot. for fresh air. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm like anticipating for, okay, we can open, when this is finished, we can open the door. Yes. Fresh air. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to add to uh, our nice conversation? Oh, thank you very much for the nice conversation. Thank you too. And uh, hope to see you live on stage, maybe at TEDx. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, people from TEDx, <laughs> go and find Denise on the internet. Yes, please do. I'm going to give you no hand hug, but just a, <laughs> just firm, a hand. firm hand. <laughs>